In this video, I'm going to give you a quick demo of CloudApp, which is a tool that I use very often for screenshots, animated GIFs, creating little movies, screen captures. And it's invaluable for me as a consultant because it automatically saves the information up on the cloud and it's very easy to share. There are free plans available. So I'm just going to show you this and how I use it. So like in any normal screen capture tool, it's sitting up here. I can um, capture uh, screenshots. Let me capture a screenshot of cloud app itself. Kachink. And this will be automatically uploaded on into the cloud. So it's uh, stored, it's not taking up any space here. And then I'm presented with the normal kind of screen annotation where I can draw lines, I can annotate it, I can do whatever else. That is um, already there. I can download it to my computer and um, same way we do normally. But the advantage is it's actually on the cloud, making it easy for me to share. Now, Cloud App also lets me save animated GIFs. I, I find this incredibly useful simply because sometimes if I'm using something like Snagit, animated GIFs don't work very well for me. So I'm going to create an animated GIF here. Let me record that part. And it will let me record any um, size image, which is useful. So I'm just saving that. Da, 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 finish. And then we should have an animated GIF. And animated GIFs are great for um, showing an actual defect in the action putting things out on Twitter, embedding it in blog posts to make them come alive. Animated GIFs can be a little bit of pain, but um, CloudApp makes that easy. Where it really works for me is when I am working remotely for clients and I'm doing code reviews or we're building a feasibility approach for can WebDriver work with our application and I'll be off-site, I'll be writing all the code to see whether um, we can make WebDriver work against the components in their application. And I'll be doing that over a week, so I'll have to do daily debriefs. And at the end of each day, what I'll do is I'll run the um, current progress of the automated execution and I'll record a video of it using CloudApp. Then the benefit is it records the video, it automatically gets uploaded, and whilst it's uploading, um, I'll be typing up the email that says, here's what I've done, here's where it is. Then at the end, I'll copy and paste the link in. Because half the battle with creating videos is doing the recording, doing editing, processing it in an MP4, and then uploading it. But doing something like Cloud App is nice and easy because as it's recording, it's also uploading and it's all there and nice and easy. The other benefit is I'm not having to share actual files over um, email because I'm just sending a link to the um, file on cloud app. So there's different ways in here. So I can share this and um, copy link, copy the direct links. I could download it and save it somewhere else. I find that enormously useful. I'll do that when I found a defect and I want to pass that on to people. You do a little recording of it or a little screenshot because it's in the cloud. It's then easy to share that link um, on Slack or via emails. When I am doing remote code reviews, what I'll do is I'll record the actual findings of the, um, the code review and uh, then send that link off to people. So they're getting an actual video that I'm not really having to worry about hosting space. The other advantage of Cloud App is that it almost acts as something like a Dropbox or a um, Google Drive type replacement because I can upload any files I want up here. Here's a zip file that I've uploaded and the different plans have different spaces. So you've got a free plan where you can um, create the animated GIFs, you can create short movies, there's 25 things you can do. And when you're working in a team, the bandwidth is really irrelevant because there's very few people actually going to share it. If you're using this as a kind of Vimeo replacement, then you want the bigger plans because then you can host the files and have more bandwidth through. But most of the time I'm using it, but most of the time we're going to use it on Teams. So the actual bandwidth is irrelevant. We just want the ability to save files and distribute them quickly to other people. So one of the useful things about this is it also does OCR. So I can search for words in the images. So I search for evil and it says there's three images in here that got evil in it. Great. So I don't, that is incredibly useful for tracking things down when you've remembered that you've taken an image of something but can't quite find it again, put it in there. You can organize things in the collections if you want to. But I find this fantastic for the sharing of the results and it cuts down massively on the time of 
putting it into a folder, attaching it to um, Jira or attaching it to some sort of version control system, putting it into an email, waiting for things to upload, all of that part has gone away. So my flow of testing, where I'm doing the testing, have a defect. If I'm using the Observatron and it records um, images, I can just drag those straight up into Cloud App and then share the link that way. For me, this is really flexible. I do use other screenshot tools as well. I use Snagit, but primarily I'm using Snagit and Cloud App. I'm using Cloud App for the sharing of information um, with clients. That's just fantastically useful. Because Cloud App has free plan, it's worth having a look at trying. There'll be a link um, around this video somewhere so you can find it. But I use Cloud App. I think it's very useful and I just want to give you a quick overview because I'm not sure many people are actually using this. We use traditional tools like Snagit or um, the, snip, the snipping tool in Windows. There'll be various other um, free tools that people are using, but for sharing, this thing is really useful.